I couldn't believe this because this will get people's attention if you want to mark how things have changed. The final episode of Cheers watched by 84.4 million people. Jeez. Oh my God. Now I heard anecdotally the other day someone was talking about a network show, one of those kind of reality game show type shows. I don't remember which one that it got picked up for another season and it got a 0. 0.5 in the demo <laughs> and got picked up. That's the world we're in Yes, now, it is. That uh, if you can get nine people watching a television <laughs> show, uh, uh, um, you are, you know, everyone wants to hand you a cigar and pop the champagne. Uh, it's a, it, and it must seem otherworldly to you. It's, it's, I think, was it David Zaslav who was running uh, Discovery Now mm -hmm. said there's 580 shows on the air now? Yeah. Oh. You know, and there's what? I don't know how many networks, 100? maybe 150. I always say, when I started out, there were three networks and 30 great comedy writers. Now there are f 150 networks and 30 great comedy writers. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. But that's, <laughs> that goes to this image I've had for a long time is what changed is the technology. This delivery system changed so that suddenly instead of there being um, three networks, not suddenly, but very quickly, and especially with streaming, there was the capability uh, because of the delivery system and the economics, that's what changed and suddenly there could be 600 shows. But why would you suddenly expect humankind to suddenly get 500 times more talented? It, it, uh, yeah. it's, it's not, and I always think of it as people wondering, I don't understand, technology just enabled us to widen the bathtub by 50 feet, what happened to the water level? And yeah. you're like, th this, is, uh, this is what it is. Now, I'm, I think there's so much, there's a lot of really brilliant stuff out there, but it's still hard to find because the volume is insane. The volume of just noise and, you know, there's just, I never, I, I'm always cast adrift. If I don't know specifically what show I'm looking yeah. for, you can't scroll. I used to just scroll through television back in the day. Right. And you could find something that caught you. There's no way you would scroll now. It's like saying, I'm just gonna wander the Mojave Desert and see what happens. <laughs> oh. My wife and I have done that and we've wasted the entire evening scrolling and never watched anything. Uh, and it just right. became like walking through the video store or something. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's because the shows that are hits, you know, like Ozark and mm -hmm. you know, it has five million bites on 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 uh, on Netflix or it's just those are rare and probably if you cull it all down it's probably the same as when there were three networks yeah you know all the good shows because that's where all the shows went all the good shows went on those three networks so it's just now so diverse that you can find a specific show for your 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 idiosyncrasy and mm -hmm. watch it and maybe four other people are watching it i uh when I first got started back in 1985, there was always this kind of sense out there that the place people really wanted to get to was movies. You could, because that was somehow more prestigious. And that would be something that you'd hear sometime is, have you ever thought of writing a movie or get into the movies? And I always thought, there's nothing better for a writer than television. And, you know, as, as you know, um, you can, uh, you can do such good work in television and because of the way it's structured, writers have a lot more power in television than they do in movies. Oh, yes. In movies, they're completely rewritten. They're at the very bottom of the totem pole in, uh, in movies and have always been treated with a kind of disdain and let's just get another writer in here <laughs> and let's, you know, let's completely redo it. But writers are at the center of television and uh, so much of, I mean, what I've, one thing I really love about your book is you just reprint pages of great dialogue from all these shows and I'm reading them and it's like you say, it's just great radio writing. The rhythm is all there. It's terrific, solid writing that uh, is as good today as it was when it was first done. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's all, you know, um, 
was brilliantly realized. Whereas if it were a movie, I think the chances are a lot of that could have been rewritten, tossed out, cut out. Those, those, uh, uh, the dialogue in the book is from, is from the shows, from some of the shows I've done, but those, that's tried and true because those sequences got huge laughs. Mm -hmm. And when we're doing a show, uh, if you write a joke and it doesn't get a laugh, you go back and rewrite the joke. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't get a laugh, you go back and rewrite the joke. You don't rely on the writers. You rely on 200, 300 people behind you. Mm -hmm. In movies, you're relying on the director and the writer, and it may not, you know, it may not appeal to an audience, but those, that dialogue in there got huge, huge laughs, mm -hmm. especially Will and Grace, which is just one, probably the funniest show I ever did. Really, you think Will and Grace, I've loved that show, but thinking of all of them, you think that was, was it the writing or the writing plus the cast? It's the cast, it's outrageous. It's the first really, other than Third Rock from the Sun, which I did, the pilot of, mm -hmm. it's the most outrageous show I ever did. I like to say it's a fairy tale, figuratively and literally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it's a show with four girls. Yeah. And uh, it's just the jokes are so hard and so strong, especially Karen's jokes and Jack's jokes. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, you know, Cheers is my favorite and will always be my favorite because uh, it, I'm part of birthing that show. But um, Will and Grace, l laughs per page is, is the funniest show because Cheers was, we were about four minutes longer than Will and Grace. We were about 26 minutes. Will and Grace was 21 and a half minutes. So you could go a couple of pages without a joke on Cheers, which we did. A lot of Sam and Diane scenes are very riveting mm -hmm. and, you know, tension filled, but there's always, you know, after a page or a page or two pages, there's a joke that undercuts it all and makes it, you know, it relieves you from the anger, from the, uh, from the, the, the dramatic moment. But on, on Will and Grace, you couldn't do that. You didn't have enough time. So it's, just joke after joke, and uh, just uh, the funniest show, per, you know, per, per the, joke Well, the per compression, minute. the comedy compression yeah, yeah. is uh, is there. And that show had such a fascinating arc because it, ex it, it ran, uh, had a great run, big hit, beloved. It, it, it leaves, and then it comes back <laughs> a number of years later. And I was, I was hard pressed to think of another show that that did that. The Connors. Yeah. The Connors. That's right. That's right. They And their, their, their show is just as good, even yeah. without Roseanne. It's yeah. amazing. Because they have that, it's one of my favorite shows, because they have that style. This They underplay everything. Everything is like this, you know. Goodman is like this, and Laurie's like this, you know. every There's not effort, but there's this rhythm in that show. You know, they don't hit you over the head with the jokes. It's just, wow. 